Hi, welcome all. Today we would like to share event processing at Optum, the cloud events way. I'm Janani Patangi, distinguished engineer, 20 years in USC, and currently I lead the Optum Functions platform. And I also have Murugappan Sevakan Chetty here with me. He is a principal engineer and tech lead and a K-native open source contributor. We would like to have a quick introduction about our organization, United Health Group. United Health Group is a highly diversified health and well-being company. It's headquartered in the United States and ranked seventh of the Fortune 500. We have two business platforms, United Healthcare, which will focus on health benefits, and Optum is a health services innovation company. Uh, across Optum, we are able to serve many constituents of health system, and we are grateful to serve and partner with nine out of the 10 Fortune 100 companies, nine out of the 10 US hospital, and serve 125 million consumers. From infrastructure and technology perspective, we have an annual spend of about $3.5 billion on technology and innovation. 99% of our workloads run in our own data center with over 1 trillion transactions annually. And these workloads will vary all the way from mainframe, to big data, accelerators, distributed SQL, containers, and now with serverless ecosystem. So this is the agenda we plan to cover today. We want to give a quick introduction about serverless at Optum, challenges with event processing, why we started to explore cloud events, and some of the Optum use cases with cloud events supplemented with demo, and we would like to conclude with summary. So now let's look into the Optum functions. It's an on-prem, fully managed multi-tenant serverless platform. It supports stateless, event-driven, request-based compute workloads. Currently, it's offered cross-DC, active-active with auto HA capability. From adoption standpoint, we are increasing and thousand, uh, more than 1,000 functions deployed today with more than 500 developers using this across the organization to solve some of our enterprise use cases. For example, ETL jobs today run as functions. We are able to serve machine learning, machine learning models and also have some of our infrastructure housekeeping jobs running on this platform. So how did we make the open source stack to an enterprise service. We started with the open source stack here, Kubernetes, Istio, Knative, and we added more enterprise capability on top of them. And as you can see here, to the left-hand side, we started with enterprise integration with Vault for authentication and authorization, Venify for auto TLS search rotation, and with our enterprise job scheduler, for all the ETL jobs that is running as functions today. And we strengthen our SRE with the well-defined SLO, SLI, and dashboards. We have very good observability, and we added a lot of self-healing and automation scripts, and we also conduct quarterly chaos game days. And to the top, we added self-service UI to abstract the infrastructure APIs and provide simple code to URL experience to our end users. And we also added a lot of training um, and uh, template projects. This is the reason why we wanted to have, to make sure that the use cases are moved in a lift, transform and shift from monolith to functions. This is all um, helping them, the end users or the developers with it. And we also introduced Graal VM, framework, uh, Graal VM frameworks to improve the Java cold starts. Now looking at the platform architecture, this architecture is running uh, two different Kubernetes clusters across the data center and we provide auto HA capability with BGP, Anycast and dynamic DNS. And now that you saw the overview of our platform, I want to quickly show uh, uh, example of our function deployment and how cloud events uh, come into action. So as uh, Janani explained, our platform is based on Knative and Knative, uh, the artifact that Knative expects is a container image. 
and all the functions run as pod. Okay. And other thing that Knative expects is the container image should expose a port so that it could check whether the application is up or not. So the application that I'm going to show here is just a web application, which is going to display some events when it gets it. Okay. And it, as I told earlier, uh, Knative expects uh, a, doc, a container image. Okay. So for building a container image, uh, you need to define a Docker file and then you need to uh, use that to do the Docker build and run it. Instead of that, I have a Go based application. Okay, this is a Go based application. To run this, um, I am going to use a tool called as Co. Okay, so Co is a tool which makes the Docker build and push layer invisible to you totally. So using Co, I'll be able to take the source code and then build and push it to the uh, repository without even defining any uh, Docker file. Okay. For deployment, this is just a Kubernetes application, right? So I can use an YAML file, I can use a Kubernetes CLI. Instead, I'm going to use a KN CLI, which is efficient Knative CLI, which gives a better experience to be deploying it on any Knative based platform. And inside our company, we have a separate UI which abstracts KN, Knative, uh, Istio, and Kubernetes, which gives a better experience. But for wider audience, I thought KN would be more helpful. Okay. So, now when I run it, so what I'm expecting is a Knative control plane to deploy this in the Kubernetes cluster and give me a URL, okay? Uh, so that's what is happening here. So if I have the integrations in the right place with Knative and cert manager, I'm, I have to, I, I, I can even get an HTTP as URL. So now you see what you see is a HTTP URL and then slowly it should turn to HTTP. There you go, okay? So within like 30 seconds, we were able to take the source code and then build, push, and then deploy as well, get a fully uh, uh, secure URL, okay? So when I open this URL in the uh, browser, I should see a web application. There you go. So this is the web application that I deployed. So when we send some events to this web application, it should display this uh, events here. So, so when we deploy something to the Knative platform, it gives you a URL. And uh, to trigger that, it's very simple. You can use a, you can call it from any other application. You can do a post, put, get, you can call it from Postman. But in the real world, uh, functions are like synonymous to uh, event processing. So it really comes down to how you're going to deliver events from a, say a event source like Kafka. Okay, so that is where Knative has a uh, has a separate ecosystem called Knative Eventing. It is even like independent of the Knative serving platform. Okay, so you can just if you want, you can just have the Knative Eventing alone installed in your Kubernetes cluster. And in it, in the Knative Eventing uh, uh, world, there are like two main components. Okay, which we'll be talking throughout this session. One is an event source, and second one is a broker. The job of the event source is to reach out to the actual source, which is like Kafka, RabbitMQ, or an, another application, take the data from it, and then send it to the processing function. And in Knative event, the processing function and where, whichever is the receiver, it's called as a sync. Okay. The sync can be any addressable service. That means anything that gives a URL, like a Knative service you saw, it gave a URL. We know Kubernetes service, also there's a URL. Okay. And then you can create endpoints to link outside services also in Kubernetes. Okay, anything like this can be a sync. Okay. And then uh, in the first, uh, there are two types of delivery happening here. One is like one to one delivery. That's what we take the data from the source, use the Knative event source to deliver it directly to the uh, Knative service or a Kubernetes service. In this case, it's like tightly coupled between source and the processor. And instead, if you have a, a, a buffer in between, it will be better for processing. Also, you're decoupling the source and the processing function. So you can do a lot more uh, with it. Okay. For this to, uh, for that, that's where the broker comes in. Okay. So you have the source, which takes the uh, event and then puts it into the broker, which is like an event ingress or a buffer or whatever you want to call it, or a state store for all the events that comes in. It will take the kitchen sink of the uh, events coming in. Okay. And we can have a, a trigger, that's another Knative uh, resource, which in which we can specify which types of events needs to be routed to uh, which sync. Okay, suppose I have a Knative service which just, just looks for a Kafka service, I'll create a trigger and then say that, okay, I want Kafka events alone. 
then the broker will deliver the cost payments alone to this uh, k native service for all these things to happen they need to be a glue or what we, they need to be a particular event type that's the okay that is where cloud events comes into play and uh, and this whole eventing ecosystem of k native is built around this uh, cloud events only so what is cloud event cloud events is an uh, event specification given by uh, cncf it is not a data specification the data inside cloud events can be anything okay so it can be uh, text it can be binary they don't have any say over that okay so as you can see in the right that is the data and on the top it just asks these four headers to be added okay so with these four headers you can do a lot of things that's what we'll be seeing in this uh, our use cases and the cloud events uh, community supports uh, uh, and then gives a lot of sdks like for all the languages that we commonly use go java rust you name it there is an sdk support for it and this uh, event delivery is not only through http it is also through kafka avro they support different formats for more details about it you can look at the uh, cloud events io website it is k native that introduced us to cloud events but it happened to solve more use cases for us uh, outside of k native also okay so the problems that we used to have was like we used to have and we are having right now also is our, com our organization is really big and then there's predominant presence in the uh, data center only uh, our on premises data center and there are like various event sources and we see a lot of redundancy in processing so there is no sharing across teams and it's rightly so because uh, there is no common esb system and it is not possible to have a common esb system also so because the esb system comes with their own domain specific language so everyone have the right their own processors and then own sources and those source and process are tightly coupled so with cloud events what we get is like for each event type that you saw in the header you could build a particular processor so if the, then you can publish this processor throughout this company and anybody who wants to process this kind of event type then they can use uh, that particular processor and the and you can use the knative broker that i just showed you so you can use you can dump in all the events from a different sources even if they are not within the knative system even if they are outside they can send it to the broker and we can use the uh, knative triggering mechanism to route it accordingly without even seeing the data just by looking at the header that's what we call as no look, no look routing we can route it okay and uh, the uh, the icing on cake is like there is polyglot stk and uh, multiple protocol supports which is not only http since this is like the simplicity of cloud events is enabling rapid adoption within our organization um so as i uh, told earlier the sources and brokers are the main parts of eventing so we need the source to take the data from the actual source and send it into the k native system which which is actually like the job of the source is to like take the data convert that into cloud event format and send it to the uh processor or broker right so knative community gives a lot of commonly used infrastructure sources like uh, github kafka uh but uh we in within our organization we have like sources like graphql um uh source and then there's a lot of file processing that's happening so we have like sources for s3 we have sources for ftp and below i have given an example of like how to write a source uh uh in my media article you can take it so the sources can be either dedicated or it can be uh, a dynamic source as well okay so when we show the exam uh, demo and the use cases we show like how to build the sources so now i just want to quickly show an uh, um, example or a, like a de quick demo on like how cloud events is sent and how the receiver function can process this cloud events and display it on the screen so uh if you remember this is the cloud events uh application that we built and then uh it receives only cloud event if you send a, send a normal data it will not be able to display it here okay let us try to send a normal data so this is the data that i want to send and uh, this is the kubecon viewer so when i send it it will say that unsupported media type 
So as I told, so what it means to send a cloud event is just by adding these headers. So I just, I'll just add these headers and say send. And as you go, yeah, you you and you get the data. Okay. So this is the one-to-one -one delivery. Directly you have the source, and then you deliver it to the SIG or the processing function. But instead, the more sought after thing is like sending it to a broker and then have the triggers and filters do the filtering and then forward the data accordingly. So let me show you how the broker and the sync look like. So this is an example of how you create a broker. This is how simple it is. And uh, broker is an abstraction on top of a, a store like uh, a Kafka or, or uh, RabbitMQ. Okay, so that is what is like storing your data eventually. And trigger, here you can see, I have two functions, kubecon viewer and KN viewer. And the KN viewer is expecting a message type KN type. And the kubecon viewer is expecting message dot kubecon type. Okay. So, and then this is the, this is the subscriber it wants. Instead, if you want to send, change, uh, change it to a Kubernetes service, you can also do it as a Kubernetes. I can just do uh, V1 and then this will be a Kubernetes service. Okay. So this is already created. I just want to show you how it looks like now. Okay. So now instead of sending the kubecon viewer, we are going to send it to the through the broker. Okay. So and it is sending message.kn.type. So here is the KN viewer. If I send this message, we should see the message here. And you see the message here. Okay. And just by changing the message type to kubecon, you see it here. Okay. So this is how this powerful this just adding these headers and sending it to broker and uh, how this is how the triggers and filters are able to filter the data and send it. Okay. So now we'll go back to the uh, deck and then see some optimum use cases. Uh, now that you saw a lot of uh, demo uh, for cloud events, let's start to look into the optimum use cases, which is using cloud events. The first one we wanted to start with is the infrastructure 360. As I already explained, a lot of our workloads is running in our own data center. And Infrastructure 360 provides a 360 view of the application infrastructure components for a given app or a service. Like for example, if an application is using a VM, a database host, container namespaces, storage, chargeback, etc. We ran into some of the challenges with the growing event sources with more than 40 uh, sources that we ingest today. And we also have to support multiple data formats and sometimes some of the overlook, overlapping formats. And there is no control over the source. So these are some of the challenges. And let's see how we re-architected that with cloud events. Now, um, the first thing that we did was to identify the different formats and for each format, we defined the cloud event type and the build parser and processor functions for it. And the second thing was to build the Knative event source to ingest the data into the broker. Now with this re-architecture, the entire process is resilient to any upstream or downstream process failures. Let's talk about another common use case, the ETL use case. This is a very common healthcare use case. The example we have is with eligibility event data coming from various sources as listed here. As the eligibility data flows through the system, there is a lot of hops and business logic that it has to go through before consumption. But with this re-architecture with cloud events, it has helped us to move from traditional ESB and ETL processing that happens with the database to event-driven functions. We now have reusable business logic functions that is shared across the team. And we are also able to connect sources and processes across the organization. Now let's look at another use case um, with IoT, um, IoT. We have a lot of healthcare devices and many apps in this industry. At Optum, we support incentive programs based on devices data. This is a very good use case for cloud events to support various formats and the types. Okay, so with this IoT use case, I just want to show a demo of like how we could take from different data sources 
parse it and show it in the DB and then maybe show it in the Grafana dashboard. So before that, uh, there are like multiple health devices apps, like there are like more, more than 40 or 45 commonly used devices and health apps. And then a lot of healthcare companies do give benefits to their users for sending their data over. And uh, within Optum also, so we have like various implementations and programs to give benefits to our users. So the one that we are going to show here is uh, mirroring an actual implementation, but not the actual implementation itself. And the data that we are using is a uh, simulated uh, data. So for this, for this use case, we are showing these three event sources alone. And as I told, there are like multiple event sources. Okay. So first I want to show how these uh, different data formats look like. So this is an example of like how the Strava format looks like. It's a JSON format though, but you can see the data and how they give the activities are totally different. And Fitbit is also a JSON format, but the data names here and there don't even match. And the duration here will be like in milliseconds, there it is in seconds. So this is some of, some of the examples. And then RunKeeper, the data comes in CSV format. It's not even uh, JSON. So that is the different challenges. And then for the other apps, there may be XML. Um, and some devices, we need to have a particular SDK. So like each uh, apps and devices have their uh, own challenges, OK? So going back to this uh, use case, um, okay, I think we, break. we have various uh, services deployed. And uh, before that, I just want to show, uh, I just want to talk about this application that is showing a graphical view of the functions deployed. Okay. Uh, it's called Graph, and then it is developed by one of the uh, Canadian community members and an important contributor called uh, um, Scott Nichols. And if you want more details about this uh, graph, you can go to this uh, his uh, GitHub repo. Okay. And then any uh, use case that we're showing here, all these use cases are available under my uh, GitHub repo, github.com uh, slash it's Murugapan. Okay. So you can okay, take a look at the source code. Okay. Now coming back to the use case, uh, we have like various uh, even processes uh, lined up. Okay. On the right side, you can see for elliptical data, we have one uh, function. For Fitbit data, we have one function. For write data, we have one function. Okay. Uh, this is all processing function. So what about data ingestion function? For data ingestion, on the left side, you can see there are various uh, data ingestion functions. So first one is like uh, the, uh, the Fitbit data, it takes the data and then converts it into four different uh, event types and then puts it back into the broker for which uh, there's a separate uh, data ingestion. So for binding, binding the uh, function back to the broker, there is a resource that Knative provides. It's called the sync binding. The job of the sync binding is just to inject the uh, inject the uh, inject the uh, broker URL or any uh, sync URL into the function. Okay, so they can send the data over that. So on the left side it is the data ingestion. On the right side is the processing function, and the middle is the broker. And the broker you can see what are all the triggers that we created. So as I explained earlier, if the uh, uh, trigger type is health or elliptical type. It's going to go into the elliptical data. If it is a if it is a Fitbit type, it's going to go to the Fitbit. Okay. Um, uh, and all the data that goes into the MySQL, you're going to uh, see it in the Grafana dashboard. Okay. Now it's time to run this. Uh, so you in the you're going to see all the uh, uh, applications that are going to get created and the functions that are going to create it here okay so on the bottom we have just triggered the shell script to start the data ingestion process so once the data is ingested you're going to see the functions getting triggered for like various processes like elliptical but everything is going to come up here okay and then uh, once this is completed so you're going to see the data here and there you go so you have data for uh, Strava, you have data for Fitbit, you have data for RunKeeper. So uh, Fitbit, as you know, is like the most complete uh, thing that gives data for most different activities. Okay, so that's about it. That's about this uh, example, the use case demo that I wanted to show. So we are taking various different data formats and consolidating, and then putting loading it into a, into a database in common format for this kind of view or give some incentive uh, programs. 
okay so uh, and finally i just want to explain how the event uh, flows through okay how the event starts and ends, ends up in a database uh, in this example uh, first step in the data ingestion process we went to the fitbit uh, api took the data convert that into the fitbit type and then stored it in the broker and we had a trigger uh, to uh, to take the health.fitbit.type cloud event and then uh, the uh, that will be processed by a particular function and it will create four events in in turn like one for steps one for running one for walking one for elliptical and the step type alone is processed by one function and then finally it's positioned into the database for us to view in the grafana dashboard so now that you saw um the cloud events in action with various optum use cases we would like to summarize by saying why we like cloud events the first thing first thing that comes to our mind is you don't have to boil the ocean because it's an industry spec and binds to existing protocols and integrates with current optum assets be it messaging or eventing stack basically it's just a wrapper around an existing event and we are currently actively um exploring serverless workflow for orchestration of the event driven functions which is again based on cloud events spec uh, open api grpc this is, by using this we want to reduce our esb footprint and most above all we would like to thank the growing community support thank you all okay thank you all